Hello everyone, welcome back to Adelterune Theory, <laughs> the one that's been on the table for the longest amount of time. Finally, determination. Literally, I think in my first theory, I was like, ooh, how does Chris make the fountain without their soul? And then I never made this video, partially because it led me down a rabbit hole that I wasn't quite expecting, and I was like, can I really actually make this video? Because... There's just so much here. How do I even get there, you know? Um, but before we begin, fair warning, I'm just going to be talking naturally. This is a PowerPoint presentation, essentially, format. Uh, so if you don't like that, sorry. Uh, you can get the spark notes from the comments, I'm sure. Um, the other thing is, feel free to listen to this in the background. Um, the only part of this that, uh, is going to actually require your eyes is going to be, uh, like, I'll warn you about it. It's like in two minutes anyway, <laughs> but, uh, if you want to just do something else to listen to this, feel free. In fact, I encourage it. I just have some funny little Google slides to talk to. So, okay. To be clear, this theory isn't about determination in general. At least it didn't start that way. <laughs> what this theory was originally supposed to be is a question of how are dark fountains created? And then after we answer that question, how can Chris create a dark fountain in chapter two's ending without what we assume is required to create one? <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's basically what's happening. Um, here are some videos. If you never watched these videos... Okay, why? Did you even see that? I kind of hate Google Slides. I'm starting to actually hate it. Can you actually see it go back and forth to the wrong slide over and over? It's really annoying. I think it's fine now, though. Um, these two videos will help you understand what's going to happen later in this video. Um... <laughs> Specifically, these little points that I've laid out here, so for the audio listeners. Uh, the first video is, why is Smile Gaster's motif? Gaster? Oh, but actually, this part isn't so much about Gaster. It's mo mostly about the smile thing. Um, where there's a line in Undertale where a monster says, Oh, all of us monsters are smiling, but that's just because we're trying not to acknowledge, you know, our despair or whatever. They're hiding their hopelessness with a smile. Um... I'm pretty sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, all of the boss monsters, and I'm using that not in the literal sense, but in terms of the monsters in Undertale that were bosses, <laughs> smile as they die. Um, Toriel, even in Genocide, does the, like, berserk smile as she dies. I'm not sure if she does in the neutral route. That would be something to think of. Um, Papyrus and Sans can't stop smiling, no matter what they do, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, Undyne smiles as she's dying, as Undyne the Undying, um, and I do think Metaton does as well as Metaton Neo. I mean, he explodes, but I'm pretty sure he's smiling before that. Um, and then Asgore has the little, uh, <laughs> double reading to his sprite, um, where you can view it as a smile, even though it's, you know, his head tilted down. So, I don't know, I just thought that was interesting to note. Um, and we'll get back to that again near the end of the video. And then the second one is Fandom Mandela Effect, The Nature of Determination in Red Souls by Dorked. Um, basically, assuming that determination is not, well not assuming, asserting, that's what I meant to say, that determination is not a soul power, as in, like, well, obviously, <laughs> the red soul can't be the only one that has determination because Al Alphys took determination from the other human souls because the red soul wasn't there. Um, so it can't be a soul power. Um, and that the other humans had given up uh, because necessarily... Um, if they had the most determination when they were in the underground, and maybe it was Flowey, but Flowey resets the timeline so much, it's uh, kind of unclear, the timeline-wise. But if the humans did drop in before Flowey got injected with determination, and at least a few of them must have, because Alphys needed a soul to get determination out of to make Flowey in the first place, 
if they had the most determination in the underground, which necessarily they should have, because none of the monsters should have had any, that means they had to have given up at some point in order to actually die. Otherwise, they could have just kept reloading, right? They had to meet an enemy too strong for them and give up, which is basically what Sans is trying to get you to do in the uh, genocide route at the very end. He's basically just trying to frustrate you till you give up <laughs> because there's no other way to stop you. So, uh, yeah. A lot to start, I know, but uh, now let's get into actually what I want to talk about. <laughs> okay, here's the scene. This is the part that you want to uh, actually look at the screen for. Here we go. The night. Oh, this is very important. <clears throat> I'm going to need this. <laughs> Soon. The roaring night. Today it deigned to create this world. Reaching its long hand to the sky, it coursed its will into its blade and made... Trust thrusting the fountain from the earth. Unfortunately, the world they created is trapped within the confines of the library. If only we had a way to make more darkness, we might be able to cover the whole world. That is when I realized this power, this power of the will, this power of determination. Is this not something that all lightners possess? If one was simply determined enough, could not anyone make a dark fountain? Okay, so you can see that Chris stuffs the soul in the couch and then goes and makes the fountain. So we know Chris does not have their soul within their body as they create the dark fountain. Which is a problem because Queen specifically says that the knight created the fountain with their power of the will, the power of determination. So if determination is related to the soul, even if it's not the red soul's power, if it's related to the soul at all, which it seems to be, because that's where Alphys was able to extract it from in Undertale, this should be impossible, right? <laughs> Chris shouldn't be able to access the power of determination if they have removed their soul. And that is the question we are here to at least pick at, if not answer. So let's start. Um, <laughs> this is basically just saying what I just said. Um, in the comments, because I specifically asked in the comments of the video where I first showed that clip and said, how did Chris do that? Um, a few of you gave your own theories, and I've kind of condensed them down into these four little quadrants. Um, and originally, going into this video, I was very confident on one which I thought this video was going to be about. <laughs> but it ended up not being that one. So let's just start with probably the most common theory, just because it's another theory that's already out there, which is that Chris has more than one soul in their body. So even though they took the red soul out, they could use the determination from another soul, even if it's a monster soul, because monsters seem to have determination in Deltarune. And there is some evidence for this, right? There are the three save files. In Undertale, we had one save file, which correlated with one soul. And there are three save files, so maybe Chris has up to three souls inside of them. Um, Chris can survive without the red soul, which is a fair point. Um, we've never seen a, a creature survive without their soul. In fact, uh, Alpha specifically says in Undertale that if you take the soul, she could use the souls of monsters. But if she took them out, then that monster would die, right? That's why she had to use the uh, amalgamates, which were people who were dying before they amalgamated. Hello, I'm editing Guilty. Uh, there's a few part, there's a few parts of this video where I'm going to have to interject because either I forgot something or found out something uh, after I had finished recording this. Uh, but for this, it's uh, something pretty simple. I just skipped over the point on this slide that says Rusty Birdcage. I just skipped right over it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so what I was going to say about the Rusty Birdcage with the multi-soul theory, uh, the reason why it is a point four is because we see a little blood splatter outside of the Rusty Birdcage, and we don't exactly know how that could have happened. Like, Chris already knows, seemingly, how to take out the soul. Or does Chris just know how to take out a soul? Um, have they used this birdcage before with whatever other soul is inside them other than the one that we control i don't know but it makes more sense than assuming that the red soul is the one that they ripped out before 
and that maybe somebody else was controlling them. So we'll have to see. Okay, and the last thing is Ralse. <laughs> this is a little bit of a crazy thing. But uh, Ralse's existence is very confusing, right? How is Ralse able to travel? Blah, 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 blah. You've heard it a million times. Um, if Chris has two souls, we know that Ralse is a lot like Chris. Maybe that's just a reflection of one of Chris's souls, like their original soul. If the red soul is a reflection of our perception of Chris, let's say, as the protagonist and the hero. Ralsei could be how Chris sees himself or something like that. And maybe the reason that uh, Chris is so cold about Ralsei is specifically because uh, they don't get to live that experience in the dark world. You know, that's a little mean. Don't you think? Being faced with exactly what you wanted, except uh, you can't have it because of, you know, being controlled. It's a double whammy of, oh, this sucks. <laughs> anyway, there is evidence against. For one, there's the stagger, TM, which this is going to come up later. But uh, when Chris removes the soul, it seems like they it's like taxing for them, you know? Which if they had another soul inside of them, would it really be? <laughs> you know? Um... If they had their original soul and the red soul came in on top, wouldn't that just make them normal when they take the red soul out? Like, why do they look so weak? And I guess you could explain it as, well, they just tore something out of their own chest. Uh, but it doesn't seem to really, like, bleed or affect them that way. You know what I mean? So, uh, we also only ever see one, which, again, in battle... You would think if Chris had two souls, we'd be able to see two souls. Um, and there's some people that would say, like, well, maybe it's a monster soul, and there's those little white flashy effects, so blah, blah, blah. But uh, would we would, we don't know how that works. <laughs> we can't really use that as evidence. Like, oh, yeah, it's white. It has little white flashing parts. And so, okay, maybe that means there's a monster soul in there. But we only ever see the red soul, and there's not really any evidence to say that if a monster soul and a human soul were in the same body, they'd fuse together. We really don't know that, so... <laughs> uh, it's it's a slight bit of evidence against, I would say, for sure. Um, next up is the NPC dialogue. You would think... Spamton is able to instantly tell that we have a powerful soul, or whatever. Your heart-shaped object. Ooh, your heart-shaped object. If we had two, you would think Spamton would be like, your heart-shaped objects, right? <laughs> and again, you can kind of explain this away if it's like a monster soul and they're fused together. Whoa! But I still think Spamton would be able to tell the difference. Um, specifically because he seems so, like, able to instantly tell about the soul. Ooh, you've got a nice soul. Ooh, give me your soul. Um... Yeah, it's a little bit suspicious. <laughs> and then there's the question of if a human can even absorb a human soul. So again, if it's a monster soul, okay. But that doesn't really align with the three save files thing. Because monsters shouldn't have a save file unless they have super high determination. So it kind of contradicts anyway. But I'm pretty sure in Undertale they specifically say that humans can't absorb human souls. Monsters can absorb human souls. And that's why the humans attack the monsters. Maybe it's different in Deltarune. Who knows? But we don't... All evidence points towards the fact that humans can't have more than one human soul. <laughs> so, there's some there's some strengths, which is specifically like, okay, there's some actual hard evidence, which is the three save files, and Chris is shown to actually survive without the red soul. Um, but, Chris surviving without the red soul, as you'll see, is also kind of evidence for all of these theories. So let's just move on to the next one. Alternate determination theory. I'm going to be shortening determination to DT a lot, just because determination is such a long word to type out 50 times, so just so you know if you're reading along. Um, essentially, this is a theory that states that Chris has another source of determination other than their soul. Um, so when they take the soul out, well, that's fine. They've got determination in them some other way. And the most logical way that we can think of, of that, because we've seen it before, is like, in determination injection. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we saw in Undertale, Flowey was injected with determination and became this super determined being. So maybe, you know, Chris underwent a similar process and now even without their soul, they're able to walk around and create a dark fountain because they have that determination pumped into them at all times. 
Um, again, we don't know if the soul contains determination, though. That might be somewhat of a slight against this theory, but Flowey doesn't have a soul, so the determination has to be kept somewhere else, you would think, if it's injected. We don't know if that's true for normal bodies. <laughs> anyway, um, again, Chris can survive without their soul, so if they have this extra determination, it explains how they're able to do that, and why it might be sort of a diminished state, but it's still, you know, survival. Um, perhaps, because the bunker... Um, is given some serious true lab vibes, especially because um, the sound that plays outside of it, if you speed it up, sounds like Entry 17, which is, you know, from the true lab. Uh, <laughs> maybe this bunker is where they got this extra determination, and that's why they have this fear of it, because they got experimented on down there. Ooh, ooh. Um, and it also might explain if uh, determination changes the soul color to, like, a red soul. It might explain why Chris has a red soul, despite not really carrying the traits you would think of associated with determination you know like chris is way more <laughs> patient or um perseverant that's not a word but you know the, one of the soul traits is perseverance um then they are determined to like change fate it seems like so maybe this determination injection actually changed their soul color and that's why it's red now who knows uh but there is some evidence against <laughs> one of these is that is there even knowledge about determination and like the term determination extractor and stuff in deltarune because the books in the library state specifically that they don't know the pur true purpose of the soul which is probably the reason why the monster and human war didn't take place in this timeline but if that's true how would they know about determination how to extract it from the soul it seems a little odd again you could explain this away as like oh well gaster <laughs> Jester just knows everything, but you could do that for pretty much any theory ever, so let's try not to do that. <laughs> the other question is the save points. Um, if Chris did have this super determination inside of them, like a large amount of it, why are their save points white instead of yellow? Um, the yellow save point we know is associated with determination, um, and specifically like having the most of it, so these white save points seem to be associated with something else you know some other power maybe uh so something to keep in mind when thinking about like oh maybe chris just has a whole lot of determination uh and the last choice here <laughs> or the last evidence piece against is queen's selection of a knight candidate if chris really did have all this extra determination injected into them why would they not be queen's first choice and I, I mean, they, Noelle could be her first choice, and then she sees Chris and changes her mind. But she seems completely agnostic about Chris. Like, she's just like, eh, it's, I don't even remember what you like, you know? Um, whoops, that's my bad. I went backwards by accident. <laughs> but if Chris had all of this determination, would they not be the best knight candidate? After all? <laughs> so, you know, it, it, just a question. I guess there's the possibility that Noelle has a greater, like, upper end for the amount of determination she can wield. Um, and I actually have some thoughts on that that we'll get to later. Uh, okay, the next theory, residual determination theory. This one, it's pretty much the one that's like, this doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you think that this question of how does Chris create the fountain without their soul doesn't matter, this is basically the theory that... Uh, is probably going to resonate with you because the basic idea is just that the determination just sticks around in their body a little while even though they took the soul out <laughs> which like yeah as you can see in the evidence against column that's never really been a thing that's ever happened before but it's never been not a thing either <laughs> Like, we've never had confirmation about how determination works. So, yeah, it could just, like, hang out a bit after you take the soul out. After someone basically dies, essentially. The good about this theory is that it's the least disruptive. Like, we don't really have to think about this at all. <laughs> then the bad is that it's, you know, the least disruptive. We don't have to think about this at all. And if so, the, does it even matter? 
does the termination even matter? I don't know. <laughs> so this one's basically the catch-all of, well, if none of this matters, then this is probably the answer. Okay, final theory of the day. Determination isn't a soul thing theory. <laughs> Not the most elegant name, but here we go. So we know determination isn't a red soul exclusive trait. We don't even know that the red soul is the determination soul, quote unquote. We don't even know if the souls actually have um, attributes that way. Although after reading Homestuck, I kind of think they might, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I kind of think that was a, that's like a, a Homestuck carryover in a, a bit of a way. Anyway, um, it's never actually confirmed that determination is the red soul's attribute. Because one of the main pieces of evidence for the other souls is ball game, which is this little golf game on ice uh, outside of Snowden and Undertale. And depending on how you get the ball into the hole, you get different answers in different text colors. It's like, oh, you hit the ball with such patience and you waited till the very last second and it's all in cyan or whatever. And the red soul, the only time you get the red text is when you get the super bonus answer. Where it's like, you were patient and perseverant and brave. So it's like all the traits. Hello, editing guilty returns. <laughs> um, this is something I found out after I had recorded this video. Uh, Ball Game actually has two endings related to the Red Soul. Uh, the first one is the one I just said with all of the rainbow uh, <laughs> names. Uh, using these, you were able to win a Ball Game. Um, but there is a second one, and it's actually very interesting for a later part of the theory, so I'm going to bring it up again then. But, uh, basically, it says, Red, try as you might, you continue to be yourself. Still not determination, but that seems to be the, uh, actual red soul trait, if we're going to go that direction. So, important to know. It's never explicitly stated like it is for the other golf minigame answers so it's a little bit uh <laughs> dubious let's say anyway um we know that chris can survive without their soul so if determination isn't a soul thing then oh it makes sense how they could survive without it because it's the same way that you can survive essentially dying in undertale you just reload or whatever um monsters now have determination which uh good typo me for putting monster instead of monsters if determination was never a soul thing, so it was never actually related to human souls, it was just that, you know, it's a, it congregated in their souls because that's only what remained after the humans died, then it makes sense that monsters can have determination in Undertale, because, or Deltarune rather, <laughs> because um, they don't, it's not a soul thing, so it doesn't matter. Their souls can work the exact same way, it's just now they have determination it, through some other method that we don't really know yet. And finally, is determination even a giant meta power? That's the question, isn't it? Because this whole video I've been describing determination as like this metaphysical force, right? Which we don't really know if that's true. So Alphys specifically says that determination is um, the will to change fate, the... Uh, what is it? The uh, will to keep going? Something like that? I'll put the little quote on screen. S screen. <laughs> screen. <laughs> um, but it's never codified as like a universal like superpower, which I feel like in a lot of the fandom, it's sort of become that. <laughs> if you have the most determination, you can save and load. Saving and loading is the power. The reason you get the power is if you have the most determination. And if determination is literally just the will to keep going, that's not like a supernatural force as much as it is just like, you really don't want to die. Which there's actually a lot of lines where... <laughs> like when Flowey is try has his little monologue where he states like, I was... I'd done it all. I was going to give up, but something burned deep inside me, and then I woke up as, it's like, he's loaded a save. That burning feeling, the will to survive, essentially, um, just the instinct not to die, 
is what allowed him to load. So that wasn't like really a supernatural force we have that <laughs> that that uh instinct to survive um and flowey just had it especially strong which is interesting because there's maybe a few other characters who might have had that especially strong that we might know noel uh anyway uh evidence against this there is a lot of talk about souls when we talk about determination and saving and loading though there's a light inside your soul <laughs> that's still shining in the cold, for example. Um, when your soul breaks, it refuses uh, in the final fight against uh, Azrael. It's, again, not super concrete. We don't really know, but it does kind of seem like the termination is kind of a soul-associated power. Um... And again, the Undertale save points all reference Determination, but again, you could... It depends if Determination is a superpower or not. Um, in Undertale, the human souls had the Determination in them that Alphys extracted, but again, is that just because their human bodies were gone at this point? And then the Fountain Closure, this is interesting. You have to use your soul to close a Dark Fountain. And why would that be if... The dark fountains are essentially a fountain of determination because they're created by you being determined and then striking the ground. It makes some sense if your soul is absorbing that determination and then you level up, right? Which happens at the end of every chapter. If determination isn't a soul thing, then why? <laughs> is basically the question, right? And you know what? Maybe that's the source of residual determination that Chris is getting. Maybe it's not that they went into the bunker and, uh, not residual, rather, alternative determination. Um, maybe it's not that they went into the bunker and Gaster zapped them with a device that, uh, gave them more than natural determination. Maybe it's literally the Dark Fountains. They're absorbing determination from the Dark Fountains and becoming stronger that way. Which makes sense, sort of, but also doesn't, because again, you have the rusty birdcage thing, which kind of throws a wrench into that. Uh, if they got their extra determination when they closed the first fountain, and they were then able to rip their soul out, the rusty birdcage doesn't really make sense. But anyway, if I had to rank them, which I'm going to, at the bottom I have residual DT theory, basically just because it's kind of the anti-theory to this one. <laughs> it's basically just saying, well, it probably doesn't matter. Um... So I really hope it's not true and that this actually matters. Otherwise, I've wasted a large portion of my life. Uh, <laughs> after that, at number three, I have multi-soul theory. I used to really believe in multi-soul theory. Um, and in fact, that was the one that I was really kind of going to make this whole video about originally. But as time has gone on, I kind of soured on it a little bit. There is some decent evidence for it, but I just feel like there's no candidate to who the other soul could be that is really compelling even like if it's Asriel or Des I don't think that's really as compelling as what's been set up between Chris and the player like if Chris is actually being controlled by another person and then also the player it kind of undermines that relationship and it seems like the game is really going for this you know Chris is being puppeteered by us that's why Spanton's a puppet. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't know how to feel about multi-soul theory anymore. Alternate DT theory. I could talk a bit about this one, and in fact I will, very shortly. Um, but I do think it slightly loses out on an edge towards something that answers more questions in the Deltarune world than just this one question, which is how did Chris make a fountain? Um... And that is determination isn't a soul thing theory. And I'm going to go into that right now. And then at the very end, I'll talk about the alternate DT theory and how I think that could be very interesting <laughs> in a couple of ways. But the bulk of the rest of this video is going to be my thoughts on why, if determination isn't a soul thing, it could explain a lot of the problems we're having with determination in Delta Room. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on that, then uh, let's continue. If not, this is a good jumping off point. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay. Oh, I forgot I have to use my mouse. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, there we go. 
Uh, yes, welcome to the Insane Conspiracy Corner. Here we go. The will to keep living, the resolve to change fate. Okay, well, there's the quote I was looking for earlier. <laughs> um, determination is twice compared to the will to live. This is by Alphys and also by Queen. Queen says the will to live, the determination. Um, in hundreds of years in Undertale, only seven humans fell into the underground. And we know it was hundreds of years because Asgore was alive for the monster and human war and he's still alive now. And that time period is a long ass time. Only seven humans ever fell into that hole on the mountain or like went to explore it. Or is it that only seven had enough determination to keep existing and living after such a long, looks pretty deadly fall. Um, when we fall into uh, Mount Epoch, Ebon? I don't remember. Uh, when we fall into the mountain uh, in Undertale, it plays the cutscene, and it is like a long way up. Like, we fell a long way as a child. <laughs> and it would make a lot of sense to me if determination is the reason for surviving that fall, instead of just like game logic which i guess it could also be but you know you know it's something to think about um if one is to lose the will slash resolve that uh we call determination then what happens then um i already talked about this earlier but flowey's close encounter with death um when he was going to give up after seeing it all that burning instinct to keep living survival instinct um allowed him to ignite enough determination to load but we also know that the humans in order to have died at all would have had to have given up so in otherwise in other words lost their will to keep living the resolve to change fate in some way now obviously they still existed and still had determination so maybe they didn't lose their will to keep living but they did lose the resolve to change fate let's <laughs> make that clear they're like i can't beat whoever was fighting them at the time and gave up on that. Um, and they continue to survive as little ghosts, I guess, little soul ghosts. <laughs> anyway, the monsters that wield determination in Undertale are interesting because the only ones that wield determination are monsters on the brink of death. So we only see it with the amalgamates who are actually seemingly somewhat content to pass on at this point like their families literally sent them like yeah they're gonna die like they said their goodbyes and stuff probably um and undying the undying who literally got chopped in half <laughs> so alphys's suggestion that monster bodies couldn't hold determination is she right her only test case was dying monsters and we know when monsters die, they poof into dust, right? So it would make a lot of sense if a monster is getting close to dying, that their body is starting to get ready to poof into dust, like it's getting looser or whatever. <laughs> Sounds weird, but okay, just go with it. In that case, it makes sense to me that they would melt. Like if they died and tried to turn into dust, but the determination was keeping them together, then they start to get goopy. You know what I mean? Um... And we actually literally see that happen with Undying the Undying. When she is dying, <laughs> um, she starts to like drip and goop. But before that, she's perfectly fine. That kind of leads us to another question, right? If Undying the Undying had this determination, it wasn't as much as us, so she couldn't save her load. But why does she die? <laughs> um, shouldn't she have been able to keep holding on using determination? And really what I think it is, is that in the same way that the human souls lost their resolve to change fate, Undyne also lost that resolve in seeing us defeat her somehow, despite all of this. Again, she doesn't know we can save and load. It seems like we're going crazy dodging all of her attacks. It's like impossible to pin us down. And again, she's bought a lot of time. Most of the monsters have escaped by this point. She's done. Um... And she doesn't get defeated until she's done, essentially, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, until she decides to die. Um, so it seems like, you know, losing the will to keep living means losing your determination, which means melting into a puddle for monsters. <laughs> um, and turning into a little ghost for humans, maybe. A little flying soul. 
the last point here is that Sans wants you to give up. I already kind of talked about that earlier, um, which is that Sans can't actually defeat you. He knows that because you can save and load. So instead, he's just trying to frustrate you until you give up. And that's the only way he can win. <laughs> okay. Monsters in Determination. So, some of the monster souls, like the ones of the boss monsters, like I'm saying specifically Toriel and Asgor, seem to persist slightly after death. Is this because they have more resolve than other monsters? This is interesting. Because Toriel does have a reason to try to keep living, right? Either in the genocide route because she wants to, you know, protect people from you, or in the uh, neutral route where she still wants to protect you from the monsters, even though you've done this thing, which she kind of forced you to do. Um, so it makes sense that her soul would hang on for a little bit before she eventually gives up. And it's the same with Asgore, right? Asgore's like, oh, I'm I'm going to die. And they're like, no, let's be a happy family. He's like, oh, something to live for. And then Flowey tries to kill him, right? <laughs> so uh, those two specifically have a lot of reason to hang on. And now I'm not actually sure about Neutral Route Undyne. I'm not sure if that's... I'm pretty sure all of the boss monsters have that little animation where they float to the middle of the screen and then their soul shatters, right? That's basically what I'm talking about. That doesn't happen with normal monsters, so maybe it's something different. <laughs> it's definitely not just a gameplay thing. Um, and I literally talked about this last slide, but uh, Monster Souls may be fully capable of holding key determination, but the circumstances in which we've witnessed that were, like not the best <laughs> um monsters on the brink of death or who had already died and are barely holding on um in that case if monsters always had determination <laughs> why in undertale don't they use it other than undyne well it goes back all the way to that thing i said at the very beginning of the video with smiles everybody's despairing everybody's already lost hope their their will to keep going and really all they have is a little smile on their face and the daily routines um so it makes sense that a lot of the monsters wouldn't be using determination in undertale or it would be so such an uncommon thing that alphas would consider monsters incapable of wielding determination just because they've been trapped underground for so many hundreds of years that they've essentially lost all of their determination quite literally <laughs> um but if they are actually capable of holding it, and it was actually the circumstances of Undertale that led the monsters to lose determination, then maybe that's why the Deltarune monsters do have determination, because they're not in such a hopeless position. They're just living in a town. Seems pretty nice. Um, that does lead to an interesting thing with Noel, though, <laughs> which I've been kind of teasing this whole video, which is essentially that why would Queen choose Noel? Well... Noelle is known for being afraid and a little bit courageous, I guess. Like, she likes things that scare her. A fear of things could be reconstructed to be a strong will to survive. Like, a strong survival instinct. Oh yeah, you're afraid of a bunch of stuff because you don't want to die. You're like, you're really afraid of dying. And if that's the case, then Noelle being the strongest of the Lightners makes a ton of sense of course she has the most determination she's the most afraid she's got the most um resolve to change her fate of you know finding deaths i guess maybe um and it also leads to an interesting thing and i actually added this in almost at the last minute because someone left an interesting comment on one of my videos um which was essentially that maybe noelle loses her power after killing birdly and i was like what why does that make sense and then making this video i'm like wait it does make sense noelle awakening too much as queen says in snowgrave might be that she literally <laughs> lost her resolve she awakened to like not having the fear she had before you know what i mean like she became stronger to the point where she wasn't afraid anymore and then she lost that resolve that will that was making her so strong in terms of determination before. And then killing Birdly is the nail in the coffin, which is essentially, she doesn't want to wield that power anymore. You know what I mean? Um, so, if the Red Soul isn't determination, what is it? Because, again, like I said, I have a feeling the souls probably do have some sort of color-coded attribute system. Because that's so homestuck. 
And I wouldn't see uh, Toby not implementing it that way. And if he didn't want to, he'd just make them all red. You know what I mean? Um, so... If the souls do have attributes and the red souls isn't determination like I've been kind of saying this whole time, then what is it? Is it loneliness? Because you know, again, Chris and Frisk both have red souls, so it should be in common between the two of them. Assuming that Chris doesn't have multiple souls, which we're not assuming at this point. Um, or we are assuming that they don't. We're just not assuming that they do. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, does it symbolize loneliness? I mean, both of them are kind of lonely. They're kind of on their own. But then, like, would Frisk's soul color change when they make friends? Same with Chris. I don't know. Youth? They're both kind of young. <laughs> That's a little bit redundant, though. Heroism. They're both the protagonist. This could be it, but, again, it's going to be more uh, explicit later. Or hope? Hope is kind of the same thing as determination, so... If I was, that was my conclusion, I might as well have just said it's determination, but I'm not. Um, in Undertale, there's the implication that the Red Soul is in somehow related to Kara, right? Either the Red Soul is similar to Kara's, and that's why um, Kara is able to kind of see through Frisk's eyes um, for like the genocide route and stuff. If the Red Soul was never really, like, a Frisk or Chris thing to begin with, what if the Red Soul just symbolizes them being a playable character? In other words, it symbolizes control, or, uh, if you want to tie it in with the secret bosses, freedom, which is, you know, the opposite of control. Basically, what it says is, <laughs> if you have the Red Soul, you're being controlled by somebody else. And this is interesting, we'll go to it in three seconds. Anyway, it lets it adds some interesting uh, qualities to these quotes that show up in all of these games. Despite everything, it's still you. Try as you might, you continue to be yourself. And it's what they call you. Not Frisk or Chris, it's what they call you. Um, so, what if the red soul mode actually means something? <laughs> um, in the red soul mode, we are in full control of the soul. We can move it in any direction we want. Unlike blue, where we're constricted, or purple, where we're constricted, or, um, green, where we're constricted, and, like, we have to play the other person's game, essentially. Um, you can move the yellow soul wherever you want, but you have to use its power in order to progress uh, in most of, the, most of those. Which I guess you could argue if the red soul's power is being able to move wherever you want, then you do actually have to use that power. But, if the red soul mode's soul power, quote-unquote, is full control, then that goes for the inverse. If we have full control of the soul in the red soul mode, then you know who doesn't have full control of the soul? <laughs> <laughs> that would be Chris, <laughs> which uh, seems to be kind of true, doesn't it? Uh, Chris has to literally rip the soul out in order to take control back of their body. Or we have to be somewhere else, you know what I mean? Like, their soul has to be with somebody else. Interesting. Anyway, final slide. So what does this all maybe mean? Well, maybe determination in monsters in the Deltarune timeline is due to them having hope. In other words, the will to keep living, the resolve to change fate. In this world, they aren't despairing because they've been trapped in a hole for 3,000 years or something. In this timeline, they can be determined to do something with their life. Um, it also might mean that if someone ever loses this hope, uh, this will, this resolve, then they might lose their determination. In other words, they would lose their ability to make dark fountains. Which could be very important when it comes to the night, and we've already seen it being important when it comes to Noelle, because she lost her resolve um, when she killed Birdly. Killed. We still don't know if he's dead, but uh, probably killed. Um, and that made Queen's whole plan go off the rails. <laughs> Chris might be trapped in the red soul mode against their wishes. Um, they might be... Uh, that lack of control might be because their soul is red. 
Um, the red soul and control could be intrinsically interlocked in that way, um, which would mean as long as we're there, their soul is red, which means they can't do what they want. Sad. <laughs> Uh, which we already kind of knew from all the, like, player stuff. The Ralse is Chris theory. Now, <laughs> speaking of old videos, um, in my original connotations theory, I had a little bit of a conspiracy rant about Ralse maybe being Chris's soulless body. Because if Chris can take the soul out, um, maybe that means the red soul isn't actually theirs, which means oh, then their body would be left behind and it would be basically a soulless object just like any of the other objects in the room and could become a darkner, which could be Ralsei, which explains why Ralsei is so much like Chris. This does kind of lean into that a little bit. <laughs> um, because if Chris is able to remove their soul from their body, then them doing that... <laughs> before getting into a fountain or the fountain knowing that that can happen might be a reason why the Ralsei is Chris thing could be real. Again, that's like my most crazy conspiracy theory theory. Um, but, you know, you know. Uh, and then Noel has a big storm coming. <laughs> uh, this is basically saying that in the Snowgrave route, we're actually kind of saving Noel in a really messed up way because we're removing her determination from the equation which means that later in the story if noelle is going to try to create a fountain in snowgrave she might not be able to which might save us some trouble and all it took was emotional manipulation yay but that's it that's the end of this so uh i'm gonna briefly talk about <laughs> alternate determination theory and why I think that could be cool. Um, I don't have a slide for it because, again, I've basically talked about it all at this point, but I just wanted to uh, postulate on uh, some events that could occur in the future if Chris does have extra determination. Seems how I was going to make the whole video about that at this point, at one point. Um, so yeah, if Chris got injected with extra determination and it's caused their uh, them to become our vessel or whatever, um, obviously they aren't a fan because they're trying to get rid of us all the time. Um, but it could also have a pretty strong effect on, uh, <laughs> their power level, let's say. Um, they're not the most determined person in the light world, it seems. Or at least in the dark world, I'm not really sure how that works. The knight seems to be probably more determined than them because they're, again, their save points aren't yellow determination save and load points something else right uh, maybe something being provided by the dark worlds and we can't save in the light world so it doesn't seem like chris has um the most determination so if they were injected with extra determination that means whoever the knight is has a lot of determination <laughs> like a lot a lot um which could mean that they are someone who also underwent the same experiment perhaps i mean i don't know like someone like uh noel <laughs> um or des or asriel uh i do have a pretty strong theory that whatever happened in the bunker is probably related to des's disappearance um and i do think that if the determination was ever going to be injected into chris at any time it would have been then when des disappeared and they went exploring behind the graveyard together as a group of four, as children. Um, and it, it's interesting because Des and Chris were the brave ones, right? <laughs> Noelle specifically remembers lagging behind, tugging on Asriel's uh, sweater sleeve that smelled like cinnamon, right? So Chris would probably be charging ahead the most, and Des would be, you know, charging after them, like, stop running off, and, you know, on your own. And then those two would get into trouble, and only Chris would come back, and the others wouldn't know what to make of that. And Chris, obviously, not a big talker, so... <laughs> Although I do think Chris would probably try to get Asriel and Noel to help Des, unless they saw something which they couldn't tell them, because otherwise it would cause uh, them to get in big trouble. Like... <laughs> They probably feel somewhat responsible if they were running ahead and then Des got swoofed. Um, 
they probably feel pretty responsible for that, which I think does kind of track with their behavior um, that we know of from like Noel and Susie. And yeah, if Chris is injected with extra determination, it's very funny as an allusion to Undertale because obviously in that one, Asriel became flowery and got injected with extra determination. <laughs> so if in this timeline, now Kara slash Chris is getting injected with this extra determination, hey, it all kind of works out, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, that's enough. I had obviously a lot to say on this topic. I feel like this one was less grounded. The last one was really grounded, and I felt really good about it. This one... I don't feel all that good about it. still at this point, even though I've been talking about it for like 40 minutes. Um, so, you know, cut me a little bit of slack. I did a lot of uh, thinking about this one and trying to organize it all, but this is a pretty open-ended question and we just don't know a lot yet. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below as always. I'll try to reply to as many of them as punctually as I can, but you know, sometimes I have to take a break. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know what I'm going to do for my next theory. I have no idea. Um, but I got to get them all out because chapter three and four seem to be coming sooner than later. Uh, probably, uh, by the end of the year or like 2024 specifically, not 2023 when this video is being recorded. <laughs> that's my guess. Could be wrong, but you know. Okay, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye!